Thanks for joining me today. I am so thrilled with today's guest. You all know if you watch the show or watch my TED talk or have heard any talk I've given about anything, I usually try to fit the story of Rocky in there. So uh, when there was a new documentary coming out, 40 Years of Rocky, I couldn't wait to watch. I reached out to the director. He actually thanked me for a message I'd put on Instagram about the documentary. And I thought maybe he'll come on my show. And here he is. Hi, thanks for being here. Derek Lincoln uh, Johnson. Thanks for having me. And I just, I'm sorry if uh, little dings go off in the corner here. I'm trying to figure out how to turn my Facebook notifications off oh. while we're recording. So no worries. Figure it out. We're, no worries. We're, uh, the audience is really forgiving, forgiven during a pandemic, <laughs> during these Zoom recordings. So we're good. Um, I was saying to you before we started recording, I may have found an equal fan in Rocky in you given your experience with the film and what you've tried to do to bring it to light. So I'm delighted to talk with you. Well, and, and again, thanks for having me. And I'm delighted to talk to you and, and I appreciate you reaching out. Big Rocky fan uh, my entire life. So um, it is pretty wild that I'm three documentaries in that have to do with Rocky in some form or fashion. Well, when I, uh, I was a kid when I watched the movie, uh, I was about five years old. And when I watched the first one, and I didn't understand the magnitude yet of what Sylvester Stallone had gone through to make the movie. And that started coming about, I think more when the second movie was coming out, because they started talking about, you know, the success of the first one. They, no one knew it was going to be what it became. And that's when I started paying attention. And that's when I got my red plastic typewriter. And I was like, I'm going to be a storyteller, just like Rocky and <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. So... Um, where was it to start for you? What, how did you fall in love with the story of Rocky? And I know that you're, by the way, we're both from, I went to Texas A&M and you went to Stephen F. Austin, right? That's right. So you love films, you majored in film, but what, when did your love of Rocky start? Well, you know, I don't, I can't remember if anyone's ever asked me that question. Um, I love that. They always <laughs> ask like, when did you get into movies, but not specific uh, Rocky. I would say there's two things. Um, as a kid, I got into Rocky because my grandfather, we would rent the Rocky series on VHS at the local library for free. So, you know, when you're young, you kind of, you're drawn towards part four or part three, whatever, like the fun wild ones, right? Because they're action oriented and that sort of thing. And, and so we would watch these over and over but when I was about seven or eight, we watched part one. Now, when you're a kid, part one is slow and boring and because you're you don't know any better. Story. Right. Right. It's it's a beautiful story, but you're young. As I grew older, I stopped watching part four so much, started watching part one, and it evolved into my favorite film of all time. Well, tied with the karate kid. But um it and I was in college when I really, really figured out that this is a really beautiful movie. It's cinematic and history. It's, it's just it's perfect. It's, it's incredible. Perfect. So I'm quite a bit older than you. I'm almost fifty, and I watched it when I was about the same age as what you're describing. I guess I was about six years old, as I said, and I don't think I could have truly understood the magnitude of the beauty of it. But I loved, um, I loved being in the theater and seeing it that first time. And I guess that's the advantage I had. I got to see it in the theater. And I loved, um, I was very tempted to wear a little beret kind of hat during my TED talk to pay tribute to Adrian, but my friends talked me out of it. Um, so the love of the film, I think my favorite is one and Rocky Balboa, because I think Rocky Balboa in that series of films was redemption for the the, the, maybe the one or two that wasn't as successful. And getting to know Sylvester Stallone's story, is that what started to appeal you to the documentaries? And as a filmmaker, as you grew up and you started understanding the making of a film, you must have had an even greater appreciation. Yeah, it, it, it's so crazy how all of this came about. Um, again, Rocky, in, in the Karate Kid. I always have to put them together. Mine's, my Mine's Rocky and Goodwill Hunting. 
Oh, well, there another classic. Mm -hmm. Those are my two favorite films. So, um, directed by the same director, John G. Avildsen. So my story of how the appreciation for it came to be with with these the documentary and whatnot is. I befriended John Avildsen, who was my cinematic hero, and I made a documentary on him called King of the Underdogs, and Sly was in it, and obviously there's a whole Rocky section, and from there, um, I befriended Frank Stallone, uh, totally randomly, His and we hit it off, yeah, Sylvester's brother, and decided to do a documentary on him, which Obviously, he's a part of the Rocky world as well. 40 Years of Rocky, the birth of a classic, came about when I was at Sly's house showing him King of the Underdogs. Stop it. Just and when it was <laughs> over, he goes, he leans into his chair and he goes, I've got an idea. Let's take all this footage of John's, put it together, and I'll narrate it. And we've got another Rocky documentary. And I mean, I wasn't going to tell him no. So how, how do you sleep after that? Like, how do you even, <laughs> right? I mean, that's just a, a filmmaker's dream. Is it possibly part of the dream? Absolutely. I mean, when I moved to Los Angeles, I was 30 when I moved there. And about a month and a half later, maybe two months later, I'm interviewing Sylvester Stallone for King of the Underdogs. Then I run into him a few times and then I'm at his house showing him that. Then I'm at his house interviewing him for the Frank doc. And then he's, I'm at his house narrating, he's narrating the Rocky doc. And it's just all this crazy stuff. And it, he became a friend and a mentor. And so let me get back to the appreciation aspect. The appreciation aspect, so that, that's kind of like my story, how I got in with the Stallones, sure. which it, I, you know, whether- We're here, whether, you got the whole half hour. You just take as much time as you okay, want. Cool. Well, that, that's <laughs> kind of like how that happened. But the appreciation thing was, I was like, when I was in a, a film student, in particular a grad student, I was um, showing scenes of Rocky to the film class. I would break down scenes and, and shots and, and explain to them like kind of why this is awesome. And either they would like turn their nose up or they would dive in and get really interested. So I had that appreciation for, for years and years and years. But one of the highlights of my career and of my Rocky appreciation was not only my whole John Avildsen journey, rest in peace, he was a dear friend, or, or you know, the Frank Stallone thing or, or Sly. One day I was at Sly's and he put Rocky on TV, on Netflix, I think is when it was streaming on Netflix. And he went through and talked about some of the scenes Killing and <laughs> it was like it's amazing whoa yeah. and and that was before he did 40 years of rocky so that was like quite an experience because it, it was we didn't watch the whole thing but just sitting there with him and he's breaking things down and giving me stories cut to and i'll end this long-winded story with this like two years later after i enter excuse me after he narrated 40 years of Rocky and we rapped for the day and we were just kind of hanging out. He turned on the TV. First blood was going off. So he's like, he's, he breaks down the last scene of first blood for us as well. So I have literally had the, the privilege of sitting in Sly's house as he breaks down Rocky and then the ending of first blood. I mean, it's just like one of those, like, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a storyteller, but I'm also a fan. Right. And it, it's this whole world I'm in right now is just wild. Well, and the credibility of you getting to do, building up to doing the 40 years of Rocky. I mean, obviously you did the other stories before that. And he saw that, you know, trusted you with this story and this footage that nobody's seen. So we're going to take a break. I'm going to show that footage um, going into the break, which is the trailer that you gave us permission to show from 40 Years of Rocky, so check it out. It was early in the morning on the streets of Philadelphia. It was freezing cold, and I just started to feel something welling inside. And they go, Sly, are you ready? I go, I'm not, but Rocky is.
You're a very lucky person when you can find out the best friend you ever had is some character that just popped out of your mind. Someone who was always there when things got rough and never quit on you. I'm talking with Derek Wayne Johnson. He is the director of the new documentary, 40 Years of Rocky, and I'm having the best time talking with you, uh, telling us the stories of Sylvester Stallone and doing a documentary about the director of Rocky and a documentary about his brother, Frank. Um, how hard was it for you to be the guy that gets to do that? Like, what about, what had you done so far that when you pick up the phone and say, hey, I want to do this, how did that happen? Well, which, which documentary? Well, let's just start that you wanted to do the one about the director of Rocky. So how do you, how do you even begin? Like this, that was the start, right? So how does that even happen? So I never intended to do documentaries. I, I'm a feature filmmaker. And, um, but I befriended John Avildsen online and we started up kind of like an, an email thing. and. Um, I had offered him a couple of scripts and he turned me down. And when I came up with the idea to do the a documentary on him, it was out of desperation because the first script that I offered him to direct, he said, I tell you what, send me the script and a check for a thousand dollars. If I like it, I'll do it. If I don't like it, you have my word that for a thousand dollars, I'll script doctor every page for you. Mm -hmm. So about two weeks later, I get a phone call from him. And he says, get a pen and paper ready. Your script sucks. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> he, went, he, he went through page by page and he kept his word. The second script, I flew out and, to meet with him and gave it to him in person. Ten minutes into it, he said he wasn't interested. So when I got back home, I wasn't living in L.A. at the time. It, it kind of clicked. So I called him. And I was like, I have an idea. Look, I really want to work with you. You're my hero. If I can't make a movie with you, I want to make one about you. And he said, you want to work with me, kid? You're in. <laughs> That's how that started. And I'd never made a documentary other than like small little making ofs, behind the scenes kind of things on, on features I did. So I had to follow through. And then from there, when that was done, my producing partner, Emmett James, he was like, what are we going to do now? And I go, I, I don't want to do another documentary. I got to get back to features. And he goes, what about one on Stallone? I go, come on, man. Everything has been done on Sly. He goes, no, Frank. Oh. Light bulb. Mm -hmm. That's how that came about. And then, as I already told you, 40 Years of Rocky came about because Sly just came up with the idea when we were, when we were over there. So... I never set out to do this unofficial Rocky Stallone type trilogy. It just sort of came to be. What I love about the documentary, and when I, when I saw that it was coming out, uh, I was just, I called my son immediately. He's, he's away at college, just kind of back and forth with the way things are right now. But I said, you, you, I, can't, you, you have, you're, I can't believe this. There's like a documentary of eight millimeter film and, and he said, yeah, I read about it. I'm like, you didn't tell me? <laughs> like, how did you not tell me? And he's a huge fan too. He watched him in order from the time he was like four years old. And he had a little robe with his name on it. You know, uh, my son did when he was little. Now he's 21. And um, he, we, I, I just looking forward, it was kind of this bright light with whatever, everything that's happening right now to get to look forward to that. I made popcorn, I poured a glass of wine, and I watched it by myself because my son wasn't there. And I watched it alone because I didn't, sometimes, um, and I'm sure you can understand, like you were saying, even the film students, they either dive in with you or they're like, eh. So I didn't want to watch it with anyone who might have a little bit of eh, you know, who, who wasn't as interested in me. And since my son wasn't there to watch it, 
I was like, just hunkered down. And I have to say when it was over, I'm like, what, what, you're like, I wanted more. And that's a good feeling. It's kind of like being in the theater and sitting and being like, you don't want to leave. You you hear the, you see the credits, you hear the music and you're still wanting more. But what I loved about this beautiful film that you made is it's just Sylvester Stallone watching it with us and going, oh wait, oh yeah, there's so-and-so and and there's so-and-so and oh, that happened there. And literally it's just kind of, I'm sure he's said these things aloud before, but in that moment watching it, it wasn't 10 takes to get that story out of him, right? He must've just spoke from the heart and kept going. One take. Yeah, I could sense that. Yeah. He, he did, and thank you for your beautiful words about the film and um, kind of got emotional when you told me you watched it by yourself. And um, there's a few things I want to hit on that. Sure. Is, is one on the, on the one take thing. Um, I asked him, do you want me to, to write it out? And he's like, no, no, I got this. I got this. <laughs> like, okay, cool. So I knew that I needed to bookend it. Cause if, if someone tells you, like no I got it as the director the writer the producer the editor I kind of freaked out a little bit so I went ahead and wrote an outline for myself and then I wrote him notes sent him the notes and then I knew I had an intro and an outro to book in it so he did uh so when we got there and he's he's going through it he was hitting note by note I still don't know. I haven't asked him if he actually looked at my notes, but he hit note by note. And I was just marking them out as I'm, you know, I have my headphones on. So these were the things you were hoping he'd hit on. Yeah. It was just synced. It was just. And he just did in one take. And then he let me record the intro and the outro. And, and that's, if, that's why it feels so organic. And I would have been a fool to have him narrate, narrate. Right. Like this is just commentary from his heart. and. The other thing you, you were saying about the footage up and then he spoke to the footage. So you decided on the footage or you both decided on the footage or. Yeah, that's kind of going back to the runtime and how you said like all of a sudden it was over. So I have all of John Appleton's footage. I have hours of it. Um, and, but kind of going back to what you're saying about if you're a little kid, you, you don't want to sit through a bunch of home movies. So Sly at first he was like, let's make it an hour because he understands that you go past that with just home movies. I mean, you're going to, it's, it's boredom city. It wasn't working. So I tried it at 45 minutes. It was still redundant because again, I only have the footage available to work with and it can get repetitive. And you don't, you don't want that. So Sly goes, tell you what, make it 30 minutes and walk away. And when I got it to 30 minutes, I was like, okay, this works. So when I took it to his house and we put it on the big screen, that was, he had seen this footage before because I gave him like a few hours of it with John Avildsen's permission because Sly asked for some of it, but he hadn't seen this yet. And when he saw this, it was, it was perfect. And so it's also sad because, yes, the, the biggest complaint, <laughs> as a matter of fact, the only complaint is that it's 30 minutes long. But when you watch it, you go, oh, I get it. It does work at 30 minutes. And it does, because otherwise you see, once he breaks down a fight, he does, he, you know, there's some elements of the different fights that stand out, but overall, there's how you break down the fight, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like, how much can you show of that, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and it's, you gotta move on. Yeah, it was perfectly so, done, perfectly done. Thank you, thank you. It, it was, well, I think the other criticism actually is, some people were upset that it didn't cover the whole series, but we're like, whole, well, then you got more work to do. <laughs> but you, <laughs> right, right. You only had that footage, right? Do they? They don't have that kind of. They, it gets more. The the footage gets more. I'm guessing commercialized as it goes up. It's different cameras of people. Or anyone? Did anyone follow them around in Rocky Three, like that? I'm, I'm pretty sure there is. But what's so special about this one is is this was John Avelson's yeah. personal footage. So uh, he, he gave us full permission. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. 
Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and then I want to share something with you that my cousin gave to me a while back. It'll probably make you laugh. I, I keep it around just to cheer me up sometimes. We'll be back in just a minute. I'm just going to hop right in. So we're talking with Derek Wayne Johnson. He's the director of 40 Years of Rocky. He is a huge Rocky fan, and we're spending the whole time talking about the documentary that he made that's just a beautiful film, eight millimeter film from the making behind the scenes of Rocky with Sylvester Stallone narrating. On the cuff, one take, which I sensed as I watched it. 30 minutes, beautiful done, beautifully done. So um, I wanted to share this with you. So my, I'm a big Rocky fan, as I've said, um, need I say more, but my cousin got this for me. Can you see it? It says Rocky in your pocket and you push it, and it says, all the classic, all the classic, all the classic things that Rocky says. So I literally like have this on a counter somewhere, or it's on my nightstand, and I, I, I have had it for 10 years. It's one of my favorite things anyone ever got me. So. Um, I wonder if uh, Sylvester Stallone has one of these. Probably not. So what was it like? Maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, what was it like when he saw it? We just have like four minutes. I could talk to you for an hour. But when he saw it, what was his response? And how did you feel about that? Uh, well, he loved it. I mean, he's, he's seen it several times since he narrated it. Um, but I remember after he narrated it, I remember we were just like all hugs and and totally excited and uh he he loves it he's very proud of it you know he's very sentimental and and rocky as you hear him say in the documentary is his best friend mm -hmm. and um he couldn't be more proud couldn't be more proud of this of this film well i saw that it's doing well on itunes and uh apple tv and i mean so you must be very pleased as well Absolutely. We made the top 10 on iTunes in the independent category. We were like, what? But a lot of that has to do with, with, with Sly, you know, Sly, he's, he helped promote this thing. And, um, and people like yourself that are, that are buying it, we're just very, very thankful for that. We, we had no clue that it would be top 10. That's wild. What's next? What's your interest next? What are you working on now? Well, that was done a while ago. So you're probably already onto something else. Well, we have the Frank Stallone documentary coming out later, um, and I'm glad it's coming out after the Rocky doc. I feel like, you know, we, we put the Rocky doc out there, and I think that'll put more eyes on Frank's doc. So that's coming out this year. It's called Stallone Frank, that is. And then um, like I will get- friend said, right? No, Frank, right? Oh, I'm sorry, say that again? Kind of like your friend said, no, not Sylvester, Frank. Oh, right. Exactly. It's, uh, and, and Frank came up with that title. I think it's a clever title. He knows. Um, he lived it. He lived it. Absolutely. So that's coming out. And I will be getting back to feature films one day, but I do have another documentary coming up. It has nothing to do with Rocky or Stallone or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's a good one. It's, it's going to be great. Well, come to the show anytime you have anything you want to talk about. And uh, whether I'm back in the studio and this pandemic social distancing is over or I get to do this by, by Zoom, I'm happy to share whatever you're doing. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure and I, I do look forward to coming back. It was early in the morning on the streets of Philadelphia. It was freezing cold, and I just started to feel something welling inside. And they go, Sly, are you ready? I go, I'm not, but Rocky is. You're a very lucky person when you can find out the best friend you ever had is some character that just popped out of your mind. Someone who was always there when things got rough and never quit on you.